Don't dating methods prove millions of years? Welcome to Critical Thinking Skin, where we look at how you can think about any faith-challenging message and arrive at a biblical, logical conclusion yourself. I'm Patricia Engler, and today let's talk about dating methods which suggest Earth is millions or billions of years old. To see why this matters, we can apply Critical Thinking Check 1, Check Scripture. Genesis indicates God created Earth and its living things during six literal 24-hour days, the kind with an evening and morning attached. So Earth's age is a biblical authority issue, affecting our beliefs about God's character and the gospel. That's because depositing millions of years worth of fossils before humans would entail that death and suffering and other effects of sin happened in the world God called very good before Adam sinned. That challenges some key biblical doctrines, failing check number two, check the challenge. So let's jump to check six to separate fact from assumption in a few common dating methods, which the linked resources unpack in a lot more detail. So first, ice cores. Researchers examining supposedly annual ice layers can arrive at dates of hundreds of thousands of years. Well, what are the facts in these analyses? The facts are the observations about the ice itself and the particles it contains. Near the top layers, these observations are fairly straightforward, but deeper down in the ice core, more assumptions come into play. For instance, researchers who assume the ice is millions of years old believe the lower layers are more compressed and therefore more numerous, representing more years. Also, it's not always safe to assume that each layer represents one year, as phenomena like storms also deposit layers. World War II planes were unearthed between 260 feet of ice composed of thousands of layers in Greenland, showing how quickly layers can accumulate. What about another dating method? Lake sediment layers, called VARBs, are assumed to accumulate annually, recording hundreds of thousands of years. Now, counting VARBs is observational science, but assuming they accumulated slowly at a constant rate is a historical interpretation. However, as a linked resource notes, Studies have shown multiple layers forming as a result of light rainfall, increasing river flow, and increased snowmelt. Underwater turbidity currents are often interpreted as varves, but they form many layers rapidly. Well, what about dating fossils? Fossils aren't often dated directly, rather the rocks they came from are. Relative dating methods assign age ranges to rocks based on assumptions about the surrounding rocks, with the lower layers considered older, assuming they accumulated gradually rather than in a catastrophe like Noah's flood. Radioisotope dating, however, is thought to give absolute ages instead of relative ones. It works like this. Atoms from the same chemical element with different numbers of neutrons are called isotopes. Radioactive parent isotopes decay into stable daughter isotopes by ejecting neutrons and protons, that's alpha decay, or by neutrons converting into protons, which is beta decay. Radioisotope dating uses isotopes' decay rates to try inferring rocks' ages from their current parent-to-daughter isotope ratios. The time for half the parent isotope to decay is called the half-life. For instance, carbon-14 transforms into nitrogen-14 by beta decay with a half-life of about 5,730 years. That means carbon dating can only date things that are thousands of years old, not millions. Methods for dating supposedly older rocks include measuring potassium-argon or uranium-lead ratios, which undergo alpha decay to produce the daughter isotopes. The measurements of ratios of isotopes are observational science. But what assumptions does radioisotope dating make about the past to calculate rocks' ages? A linked resource lists three assumptions. Number one, the rate of radioactive decay is known and has been constant since the rock formed. Number two, there has been no loss or gain of the parent or daughter isotopes from the rock. And number three, the amounts of parent and daughter isotopes present when the rock formed are known. A method called isochron dating is supposed to account for the third assumption. But as another linked resource explains, this method assumes different isotopes diffuse at equal rates, which isn't necessarily true. What other facts suggest that radioisotope dating is fallible? One research team found numerous examples, including carbon-14 and supposedly billions to millions of years old diamonds and coal. They also found potassium-argon dating declared a Grand Canyon layer 270 million years older than a layer far above it. To help explain why radioisotope dating assigns ages of millions or billions of years, this team suggested that radioactivity rates may have been higher during the flood, although a mechanism to counteract the incredible heat this would release hasn't yet been determined. 
But like episode 4 explained, it's okay to have unanswered questions knowing that God's word is infallible, well supported, and leads to far fewer unresolved questions than naturalism, as we'll continue seeing next time. Meanwhile, for more on how to think critically about any faith challenging message, you can access my other CT Scan episodes packed with tactics, tips, and tools that helps me as a Christian student at Secular University. Thank you for watching. Hey, it's Patricia. Just wanted to let you know that if you like these videos, a free, easy way to help Answers in Genesis Canada produce more content and equip more people to defend their faith is to hit that like button, subscribe to our channel, click the bell, and of course share these resources. I know you might hear that kind of thing a lot, but the reason these actions are so important is they inform social media algorithms to help these videos reach more people who can benefit from them. And that's especially helpful because advertising is super expensive, but this way, even media platforms which are often unfriendly towards biblical content become tools to promote gospel outreach for free. And if you're on board to share this message of biblical authority and want to give, you can also make a one-time donation or become a monthly supporter by clicking the link below. Thank you so much.